I finally did it. I got invited to the anime convention Hyper Japan in London. And in there they had a whole bunch of Nintendo games, including the fated Sword and Shield. This was the first game I went to. Of course, I just had to get my hands on these games and give you all my impressions. And as you've read from the title... Uh, yikes. Uh, it's even worse than I thought it was going to be. It wasn't such a great experience. But why? Why was I disappointed? And was there anything good in the demo I played? This is why Pokemon Sword and Shield were even worse than I could have imagined. As I expected, the visuals weren't that great. While the in-game battles don't look too shabby, it's the overworld that really falls short of a Nintendo Switch game. The low 30fps combined with the minimalistic looking graphics gives this game a cheap feel. The battles include some nice looking Pokemon models, especially with the newer Pokemon like Sobble and Grookey. Skull Bunny especially actually had to my surprise, some really neat looking and unique animations. I made sure to test out every Pokemon with every possible move, and Skull Bunny was the one that definitely stood out to me the most. Still, as you've all seen, many of the animations were reused from past games. Some work, some don't. It's kind of a mixed bag. I'll touch upon game performance in a bit, but for the most part, I wasn't surprised by the lacking visuals. From what I could hear from the music, it was pretty standard. The trainer battle music is the weakest I've ever heard in the series, and the gym theme sounds too identical to past versions. Nothing stands out about it. The gym leader music was pretty great however. I'm glad to see this trend of great gym leader music carry on onto these games. Saying that, Seeing the game up close and in the flesh sadly didn't redeem it. Especially the overworld visuals, that look too plain, as if it's trying to compensate for something. But that something just isn't there. What can you really expect here? It's the same typical Pokemon gameplay we've been receiving for years, except I'd argue a bit more bogged down. While Sun and Moon had the unique island trials, which I felt were a nice, fresh spin on the gym formula, they've decided to just revert back to the gyms again. There's these new gym challenges, but they feel like the typical challenge we always received for gyms. The stadium setting didn't change anything up either, as it's just the typical gym leader battle once you enter the main stadium. The battle system feels one for one like X and Y, no quality of life improvements from what I could tell, and the movement in the overworld is identical to Sun and Moon, right down to spinning the analog stick so many times to activate a twirling animation. The only truly new feature here was Dynamaxing, and I don't like it. It's just a nuke button, as I suspected, basically giving you the win on the match if you activate it at the right time. The moves are incredibly overpowered, and it just doesn't feel as satisfying as I was hoping. I also don't like that you can't keep the Dynamax form once you switch out. It just reverts you back to your old form again. Unlike Megas, in which you could still switch out with them and retain their form. Something I did find pretty cool is when you enter the stadium to battle the gym leader, the transition to the battle is almost seamless, and this added just a bit more polish to the experience I found. Overall though, it's the exact same gameplay from Sun and Moon except with a new nuke button that also feels like it's from Sun and Moon with its Z moves. So to me, nothing felt fresh here. But I do understand that it was a very limited demo, and just maybe there'll be a lot more gameplay variety in the future. Let's hope. I know people are going to hate me for this, but out of everything I played from Sword and Shield, the performance was something I was keeping my eye on. X and Y and Sun and Moon struggled in this department majorly, and I wanted to see how well 
or how poorly Game Freak had optimized this for the Switch. And sadly, it ain't looking too good, Chief. A very weird performance dip I noticed straight away was when you battle a trainer. It shows your trainer and theirs, and this screen chugs as if the game can't handle loading two animated NPC models at once. I find this to be, honestly, pretty embarrassing. And if they couldn't even get this to run properly, how telling is this for the rest of the game? The game lags for a bit when Dynamaxing a Pokemon, and as mentioned before, the 30 FPS does not do this game any favours. Moves in battles also sometimes pause before they come out, and I find that especially strange that Game Freak couldn't optimise that properly. Playing this demo just confirmed my theory of the engine being the exact same as the 3DS, except for a very poor optimization level that I'll never understand, considering what franchise we're talking about here. As you all could have guessed, my experience with these games wasn't so great. Not only that though, I was surprised at just how many of my concerns came into fruition here. And that's really upsetting to see. I was hoping to be possibly surprised, but other than a few animations and battles that I got a kick out of, nothing here surprised me, pleased me, and most importantly, impressed me at all. I'm not convinced that these games are going to be great, and I'm sorry if my constant bashing and negativity with these games upsets you. I'm just being truly honest here, and I do try and identify the positives, but from what I could tell, there just wasn't many here. Sorry. <laughs>